Oh my god, Ila, what are you wearing? You look so boring. And that's some shit. Nigerian man. People forget that friendship actually takes effort. Like, it has to be something that you nourish. Probably as much as dating. And the shoes. The most of my dresses are rather on the sexy side. But what in the supremacist is going on right here? Because it doesn't mean much to me as a person, to be honest. Like, <laughs> wait, I'm laughing because it's... <laughs> Because it's ridiculously stupid. Bruh. Who do you think I am? <laughs> Obama's daughter? Yes! Hear me out. <laughs> Look who's here. Jump. Oh my god, Ila, what are you wearing? You look so boring. I know, I know, I'm at work. <laughs> and it's my lunch break time. I'm about to go meet Kate. Yeah, you guys saw her once in one of my vlogs when I went to Casablanca Pool House. When actually we met there last time, I forgot one of my, a part of my tripod. So after we left, Kate is the one who found it, right? So she contacted me, she was like, hey, I found this part uh, of your tripod in the room. I was like, oh nice, let's meet and get it. And since then, <laughs> it's been like a month or maybe two. We haven't been able to find time to meet. And Kate was like, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it. I can't talk. I'm not saying it. <laughs> so please, I am not sending it via post office or via email because I want us to, to just have a coffee together. Her office is actually very close to mine. So today we we're like, you know what? Let's just have a lunch break together and you bring the, the tripod part. So that's what I'm gonna do today. We chose a restaurant called Buco di Muro. It's supposed to be Italian. I've never been there before. <laughs> With reason, and thanks to it, now we have a nice lunch break. It was a my hostage, so <laughs> I, I, for purpose, I stole it. And I was like, but you know, also, that's it. I have another oh, meeting, okay. I got another meeting from two, so... Oh yeah, you told me, it's two or three? Two, from two, sorry. Yeah, like his Google is quite good. Yeah, I wonder what is this for? Ah, no, it's like. Who do you think I am? <laughs> Obama's daughter? Yes. No. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a Zara one, and I, I actually bought it because it's called Femme, like woman, and I felt like it was my woman era. So I said, let me buy it. I'm glad you like it. Yeah. <laughs> I want to hear more about your Buma era. Because he's the one grabbing it, right? So <laughs> he's like, oh yeah. <laughs> Bye bye. Sorry, I, I need to it's okay. Okay, okay. We have a great meeting. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Thank you. Guys.
guys, I was out here using the rest of my lunch break to finish the book that I borrowed from the library recently, right? It's called Da Vinci's Ghost. I don't usually read books about like big personalities. Yeah, the only book about some big personality that I've read is Becoming by Michelle Obama, but we're talking about Da Vinci, so... I don't know how to... I just realized I made a comparison without really wanting to make a comparison but it's like, yeah, this Da Vinci, Michelle Obama, I'm not comparing but I'm saying like, you know, famous people, big names in history. In history. Shut the fuck up, Ila. Okay, Da Vinci. So this book is about Da Vinci, right? So when I saw this book written by Toby Lester, I was like, you know, let me actually dive in into the head of this guy because it's all about getting in the head of Da Vinci. Why was he obsessed with human body, obsessed like human form, human shape and the circle and the square, you know, all the theories. So I was eager to dive in into his way of thinking, right? And then I discovered through this book that I know I'm geeking out on you guys, but I promise I'm not going to be that boring. Hear me out. So in this book, we discover, I discovered that uh, many of the ideas that Leonardo that Da Vinci had in terms of shapes, circles and square were coming from Vitruvius. It was not out of the blue. It was from another person that's not really as known as him that was also working in architecture and a little bit of mysticism kind of thing. We're talking about 20 to 40 years before Jesus. So when the author mentioned Vitruvius, he's trying to tell us that, hey, Da Vinci didn't have his idea coming out of the blue, but most of them were coming from Vitruvius. So who is Vitruvius? So we're getting now into the life of Vitruvius, right? So keep in mind, this is 20, 20 to 40 before BC. Vitruvius is basically trying to insert circles and square in the architecture of cities because he thinks that they reflect what is in the universe because the universe is made of squares and circles and stuff like that by then that's the only thing they know right and to him God created the universe with those shapes because the human being is also a creator in that sense it should be doing it the way God did it everything was going well we're talking about Vitruvius and his life and blah 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 and then the author exposes one of Vitruvius ideas that was written in a very famous book that's called the 10 books that many architects probably know about that book I guess because many of them were inspired by that listen to what he's saying he says in southern climates where Africans and Indian live the excessive heat of the Sun robs body of the moisture this creates small people darkened skin <laughs> wait I'm laughing because it's <laughs> because it's ridiculously stupid. This creates small people, darkens their skin, crinkles their hair, and raises the pitches of their voice. The heat quickens their minds, making them inventive and mentally agile, but it also dries out their blood, making them cowardly in battle. In northern climates, on the other hand, where the Germanic and the Nordic tribes live, cold temperature give rise to an abundance of moisture. This creates large people, lighten their skin, straightens their hair, and lower the pitch of their voice. The cold renders their mind sluggish, making them slow-witted, but it keeps their supply of food ample, making them brave warriors. I have to keep in mind that this is 20, 40 before Christ, so they don't know much. They don't, they don't know any better. But what in the supremacist is going on right here? I was also watching out for the author. I'm like, I hope he made a comment about these lines. And thank God, Toby Lester was like, this is a remarkable passage. In effect, he provides the blueprint for a race-based ideology of empire that for two millennia would hold sway in Europe and has yet to fully disappear. I was like, thank you, Toby, because this is some BS. <laughs> Vitrivius didn't know any better but like Bruh. did you travel the world is dead i know i have to calm down he's dead and stuff but did he actually travel the world and went in africa and the south and found that people were short and cowardly in battle who did you see because in my country we have like the tallest men of africa like not only that but people could fight like i was like where did he come with this conclusion about like you had to travel be trivial travel the world and i was also a little bit disappointed in da vinci i'm like this is the person you got inspired from da vinci get some better idols Boy, if you don't... <laughs> Anyways.
いいですか。はい、ありがとうございます。すいません。
we're doing today I am actually coming from work and we're gonna have a long workshop day where we're going to tackle climate change so basically okay I don't want to geek out on you guys but basically my work and I have organized this uh, workshop where we are inviting delegations from other countries uh, all over all over the world actually I didn't really check but yeah all over the world and this time the theme is going to be climate change and basically how to incorporate climate change in infrastructure in gender issues in solid waste management and stuff like them basically SDGs but as you guys know I'm an environmental scientist so my work also revolves around well what I studied for thank god I'm really lucky in that sense so I was a little bit conflicted as of should I vlog or not I mean obviously I cannot show people faces and my work and stuff like that like you know for privacy issues but I was thinking maybe I can like sneak peek a little bit just to show you guys around because to be honest I'm not showing you the content of the workshop of course because I'm not sure you guys care that much about climate change per se I mean I wish you cared I wish everybody did but this channel is not about environmental science right but anyway so I'm not showing you the content for that purpose but the facilities are nice the entire workshop is gonna be in Pacific or Yokohama if you guys are familiar people in Japan are probably familiar with that it's like a big town hall where you organize conferences the last time I was there was for TCAD 7 TCAD is like a big ass conferences between African countries and Japan usually it goes around develop why am i giving so much detail i'm geeking out on you guys anyway ticket so pacific yokohama is a nice place and i wanted like to show you guys around so you can have an idea of what it looks like also we're gonna have some site visits around minato mira area the history and their infrastructure process so i was like maybe i can like insert some stuff and like tag you guys along so you can have um, basically have uh, an idea of japan on my work side so I have to go back there to Pacific Yokohama because we have a reception today. Today is day one of the conference and we have like a reception for welcoming everybody. So I'm back home so that I can change for the reception, look a little nice, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not sure if I should actually do that because I'm afraid it's going to be too much, you know? I don't know because I don't think anybody's going to change per se. But I'm like, I was wearing really, really formal. Talking about wearing, remember the unboxing? This was my gift from my auntie DT, you know what I'm saying? It feels kind of weird to wear such an expensive pair. I don't, I'm not really a brandy person per se like I don't go out there buy a Gucci bag or a Louis Vuitton because it doesn't mean much to me as a person to be honest like I, I don't know I, I'm a Congolese I know but I don't have that part of Congolese in me <laughs> I guess but yeah it felt kind of nice to like show off also I'm in my scarf era like it's like she knew you remember the haul I did before I go to I think it was Hokkaido I showed you some of my scarves right that I bought from Shein because I don't give a fuck <laughs> So I felt like because of my work and the type of event that we organize, I'll be using much more my lady side type of thing. So yeah, I bought a bunch of scarves and stuff. And then I received this gift. I was like, how did she know I'm in my scarf era? Period. Anyways, let me change and let's go to the reception. I'm just going to be showing you people's feet and food. Lady. Okay, I realized that most of my dresses are right on the sexy side. So they're mostly short and like revealing a little bit. I don't know where all my formal dresses are. But anyways, I cannot wear them, so hence I have this long ass green dress. Let me show you it looks like. And I couldn't resist by go with high heels because this dress just goes better with high heels. And I already know it's gonna be too much. Nobody asked for this. Right. And the shoes. <laughs> and then I'll add a coat because it's still kind of cold for me. And this little bag. Accessory. We are good to go. Yo. 
外色夜夜那个，六分 street 夜那个，穿着那么是领口，那外国莫给搞的，一股那你要怎白色 ？I free them that's fucking house, I free them that's fucking house。Pourquoi je mets du gloss à 17h? It was basically my neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to be excited for you guys so that I can film something and show you around like Hey, this is me, not to me, right? Look at this, look at this thing But it wasn't that exciting Maybe for some of you guys it's actually very interesting, right? I don't know, but the summary of it is just that it's a very built city and they have a lot of funding for building resilient infrastructure that are na 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 to climate change, to disaster, na 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 That's it. Are you not ashamed of yourself? Tomorrow we're going to visit another place though. We're going to visit Turumi River. I've never been there before. It's going to be my first time. So maybe it's going to be interesting for me. Therefore, for you. Because I'm going to make it look interesting. I'm just grateful that my colleagues didn't really mind that I had my cameras around. I mean, most of them also have cameras for like trips, souvenirs and stuff. So they probably thought I'm just doing things for souvenirs and stuff. So that's nice. I also made a friend, which is nice. Another girl that is half Japanese, half somewhere in South Asia. I'm, I'm a bad person. I forgot. But she's working for the government. And the good thing is that we are the same age. Range, so we stay together doing the site visit, and we had quite interesting conversation. We we're actually planning to have dinner soon, and I like that you know, making friends very organically. I mean, this is like fast forward saying friends, but like I would say I could build that up. People forget that friendship actually takes effort, like it has to be something that you nourish, probably as much as dating. We've never been taught that, right? We just think that friendship comes naturally, but the older you get, the harder it gets to make friends, especially genuine friends, like good people that you want to hang out with without feeling awkward, without feeling bad about yourself, or without feeling bad about them you know a certain way so yeah it takes a lot of effort you need to build that up you need to set meetings you need to go out together and even if at the first stage it's a little awkward and stuff but you get better with time so nourish your friendship <laughs> Pieces in my room. 
you coming over That's cool I could use a little something to do can Go outside, take a little ride if you want to That's cool I did what I supposed to There's nothing left for me to do So now I'm walking out Nigerian men. We have like Nigerian decision makers, whatever, in the delegation. Let me tell you, Nigerian men. Mm, I'll stop right there. And overall, the day went well. This was day three, and yes, two days to go. This girl is not finding any time this week for editing, for thesis, for anything else. So I'm hoping not to go to the reception so I can like edit a little bit today at home. Anyways, it was another good day. I'll see you tomorrow. Do you play those roles and then the back of those roles are you know, these, uh, these particular roles, right? And, just, and think about how you would... Maybe I could be a sadness Maybe I could be something more Baby, it's always summertime When I'm with you, that's not a lie Maybe you could be my solace Okay, highlight of the day today is that I'm so sad because I've noticed that I've forgotten a Swahili and that's some shit. We do have people from Tanzania and Kenya and I'm not sure about Tanzania anymore but in Kenya they speak Swahili and Kenya is like one of my neighboring countries. So one of the participants came to me today and asked me, oh girl, where are you from? I was like, I'm from Congo. He said, oh, I'm from Kenya. I was like, oh my God. And then he started talking to me in Swahili. Like I can't understand everything he's saying but oh my God, the moment I'm trying to reply to his answers is coming in Japanese. Which is absolutely weird because I don't even speak Japanese like that and I felt so sad because it's one of the most spoken languages in Africa, right? So it gives me such a, a good opportunity to network or to just exchange with a lot of people from different African countries And I was like, when did I even forget my Swahili? Never mind. I'm not even practicing it since I'm like what? I don't know 10 years old and that made me sad. Tomorrow is the last day Eee! I'm so happy because we're finishing earlier than normal business hours but still it's a lot of interaction a lot of logistics to consider and stuff like that and it's just like you know and i'm giddy giddy sometimes anyways i'll see you tomorrow day five last day I say the better thing seems to go when you need someone that you also feel needed. You're so beautiful, I'll give you my heart, babe. You're so beautiful, I'll give you my heart, babe. Find me attractive, or do you just like something you like? I wanna know you better, but I don't know how to go slow about it. Treat me with your kindness, and I see what I.
that I can do sooner. It was the last day of this workshop, guys. We finally finished! Yay! Oh my god, I am so happy. I didn't realize how exhausted I was until I came back home yesterday. And I was like very nervous, not nervous, how to say, very irritable. Everything that was said, done, every single thing was making me so upset. It was a great workshop overall, nice networking opportunity. But I'm looking forward to going back to the office and just not deal with a lot of people's energy. Even though I feel like I'm an extrovert, I come out as an extroverted person. I'm really easily exhausted with interaction especially when there's like a hierarchy people that are like high rank and then now you don't know how to deal with them I tend to be very very casual with everybody especially with my company it's like you really have to be a certain way I'm just looking at everybody like it could be the president uh, and I'm just like yeah yeah, you want some sandwich? <laughs> I'm like that. So there's a lot for me to learn. I also realized that I'm becoming a little bit more Japanese like in my way of doing things, in my way of standing, sitting, reaction with people. I was like, hmm. That is, that is very interesting. Anyways guys, so now I'm gonna go watch Love is Blind. Not the reunion, cause I've already finished that, but the commentary from Jessie Hu, cause my girl, I love her. If you guys like show's commentary, I highly recommend Jessie Hu, cause during black women's black history month you know what i'm saying no, this month she's like doing black women's jesus rose on a third day so as black women still we rise month Ooh. this love is blind guys i usually do commentary of love is blind japan which we only had one season right so if you had the second season i'll probably do the commentary of that as well but i don't do commentary of love is blind uh, america or anywhere else but i do watch it a lot this was the messiest season ever love is blind season four what a mess what a goddamn like i'm not even going into commentary in summary for me jackie's trash marshall like you need to slow down as of know where when and who you have to be vulnerable with i like me a black man or just a man period that's emotionally available but you have to know the situation where you you should do that you have you know what i'm saying i felt like at, at some point it was a little too much for me i love paul i don't know maybe because i'm an environmental scientist but i like the guy i like his vibe i like the fact that he's unshaken by things kwame absolutely not my type brett Brett is everybody's type, okay? Brett is like... Brett is like... We need, we need us like 10 million Brett around, period. We need like a lot of Bretts here, there, there, Brett, 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 everywhere. That's what we need. <laughs> Who else was there? Josh? He's like a kid. I don't know. He's not my type at all. I also like Bliss as a person, but that voice. What's up with that? What's up with that? Um, so yeah my father doesn't like that you know why is, why do people talk like that is it a thing or is it genetic or it's like a trend i don't get it i'm so sorry for that random commentary on love is blind <laughs> anyways day five done tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way and guess you try to stay strong and fake a smile until i look away but i've known you too long it hurts to watch your blue 